Okay, we're going to uh, continue talking about um, Samuelson's overlapping generations model, two period overlapping generations, and we're going to use the same um, physical setting that we've been talking to talked about um, earlier. There's um, just to to remind ourselves. There's um, there's consumers named I equals zero, one, two, forever. It's really important that this goes on forever. Um, the consumers have um, utility functionals. Um, they about potentially infinite sequences of uh, infinite sequences of consumption that look like you of when they're young, you have consumption when they're young, you have consumption when they're old. The, uh, they have endowments when they're young and when they're old. Um, superscript is your name, subscript is time, and I use uh, I and T interchangeably for time. So, um, what we're going to talk about now is, um, and we we used a we used a setup where this was pretty simple. This is why, um, for example, we used we constructed some stationary equilibria where this was uh, y when you're young, y when you're old, for all i, and we endowed people more when they're young when then when they're old. Um, okay, so what we're going to do now is um, we're going to talk about a device that David Gale uh, used uh, slightly different context, but we can apply his machine to compute um, to compute other equilibria, other competitive equilibria. Um, other competitive equilibria, Aero de Bru style with time zero trading. Um, so the, our, our key our key weapon here is we're going to um, we're going to derive something called an offer curve. Um, so let me tell you about David Gale's idea. It was to combine two things, which was an offer curve, which is going to be some function. for person I, uh, a person at, who is young at, at time I. Um, and what this is gonna be is, this is gonna be a combination of CI, CI plus one, his pairs um, that um, he might choose in some um, competitive equilibrium. Um, so these are going to, they're going to be swept out by, these pairs are going to be swept out by um, a relative price vector. That's, that's how we're going to do this. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna rewrite. I'm gonna write alpha i equals q zero i plus one over q sub i. So that's our. Um, this is our um, reciprocal of gross one period interest rate that we talked about last time. Um, because these, these two Aero Debu prices are the only ones that affect, um, that really concern um, household I. Um, because that's the price of goods when he's young, that's the price of goods when he's old, measured in 
uh, whatever units we chose to measure these times they were prices in. So we're, we're gonna write down that household um, optimum problem, uh, which looks like this. Um, this is undergraduate micro. Um, so we're gonna maximize this subject to um, a single intertemporal budget constraint, um, which which is actually you can you can convince yourself that this is just his piece rescaled. This is just his piece of the Arrow de Brew time zero budget constraint. Um, so I'm having trouble here. That's that that's that relative price where I'll just say that alpha i, I've told you what alpha i is, is it's also equal to r between i and i plus one inverse. It's reciprocal of that gross interest rate. You could call it that. Just what we're calling it. Um, so, so, So we can say a, a, a pair, a CI I, CI plus one I on the offer curve. They, um, they simultaneously solve a pair of equations. There's two equations and two unknowns. And the equations are, um, I'll just, the budget constraint at equality, that's the budget constraint, at equality. Um, that's a budget constraint. And the marginal condition um, that we've seen before, the ratio of marginal utilities So this is a this is a manifold or a set. This is a so we want to think about this generates as I as I vary alpha i, um, I'm going to map alpha i into pairs that solve this equation. And this is called the offer curve. Um, So the offer curve is the collection of these that are swept out by different um, alphas. And I, I, could, I could write this curve, I'm gonna choose to write this curve like this. It's, it's gonna be, it's gonna be some, some function that looks like that. And um, we know a lot of things about the offer curve from elementary um, microeconomics. So let's remember some of the things we know. So I'll draw this offer curve. Here's CII. I. And here's CI I plus one. Consumption today down here and consumption tomorrow. And I have um, I have my endowment point, which I'm gonna plot right here. This is why um, today, and this is my endowment I tomorrow. So I have an endowment point here. I've chosen to write it here. So there's gonna be a different, there's gonna be a different offer curve there's a different offer curve. This is implicitly a function of yi, yi plus one. If I move this around, if I move my endowment around, I will surely move the offer curve around. 
Okay, so the, the way this is gonna go, through this point, I have a, I have a, an indifference curve. And, um, and what I do is, is I, uh, this is a, this is a particular alpha I, I would, I would stay, I draw that tangency, that's a particular alpha I that induces me to stay. If I sweep out the entire collection of uh, points, um, you know, as I vary, like if I, if I put the, if I, if I give you a higher interest rate like that, you might go here. I give you an even higher interest rate, you might go here. So if I connect all these points, that's your offer curve. So your offer curve is the, the locus of tangencies swept out by varying alpha i. Um, and what you'll notice is the offer curve always lies inside the indifference curve through the endowment. So here's my endowment. Um, here's my indifference curve. And there's my offer curve. So that's one of the two curves that David Gale is going to use in his in his wonderful machine. Okay, so that's the offer curve. I'm going to draw another line. I'm going to draw um, a feasibility frontier. Uh, so let's feasibility was this, if you remember, um, at time I, there's two generations alive. These are the young and these are the old. And this is a pure exchange economy. There's only endowments. Here's the endowments brought in by the young. This is the endowments brought in by the old. So this is, this is a feasibility restriction and I'm just gonna draw this line. I'm gonna draw this at equality. Oops, no, I'm just gonna replace this with equality and I'm gonna draft, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, draw, I'm gonna draw it. So if I, if I draw that, This is really fun. And some magic is going to happen. And what we're doing is we're building a machine to solve a nonlinear difference equation. Now watch this. This is tricky. I did something with the axis. Um, what I did. Notice what I did here. Um, and feasibility is just um, it's just going to be um, well, it's going to be a straight line but between That's what I put on the axis. What I'm gonna put here is, uh, I'm gonna put my endowment point here. Well, that's the same point. This is Y, I, I, that's down here. And here I'm gonna put Y, I minus one, I, bring that there. Okay. 
okay? And feasibility is just gonna be uh, in our setup, it's a 45 degree line through this. So let's see if I can do this, right? Let's hope this line goes through the right point. Wow, it's gonna go through pretty well, pretty good. That's the point. That's So the feasible region, you know, make this really light is, is on here. Those are my feasible, those are my feasible allocations. Okay. And this is the line, this is that line. So here's what, here's what David Gale did. He stared at this. He drew, he, he drew these, he drew these down and what he noticed was well, wait a minute, uh, I could put, could I put the offer curve here too? Let's add the offer curve. So we know that there's an offer curve that goes between here, but he had to notice something first. Um, let's come back here. Look what, when we drew the offer curve, I had this on this axis, but when I did the offer curve, on this axis, I had C T plus one T or C, sorry, I had C I, I, it was, it was somebody old, but it was when, so I had the endowment when young, I had the consumption when person I was young, and I had the consumption when person I was old. That's what I had with the offer curve. So with the offer curve, let's just put it on here. Um, I just draw the offer curve. It, um, to keep it non-busy, I won't draw the indifference curve, but the offer curve looks something like this. That was our curve psi of C, remember what we had. Um, this is a function of I, I, C, I plus one I. So notice this one involves, um, well, how many generations are involved here? How many generations? So this curve, this curve involves generation I only. Um, but this curve, this curve, let's do it this way. This curve involves generations I and I minus one. curve involved only generation I. Okay. So um, let's pause here for a second and think about this. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to use this graph as a machine to compute competitive equilibrium allocations. And then after we've got the allocations, we can get the arrow degree prices very easily um, from our marginal conditions. Um, so we're gonna compute competitive equilibrium allocations first, not by solving a planning problem. Uh-uh, that's out the window. And because we already kind of know that because um, we know at least one of the equilibria is not Pareto optimal. And it's gonna turn out a lot of them aren't gonna be Pareto optimal. They're not gonna solve planning problems, um, most of them. And then second, we'll um, compute prices. That's gonna be easy. Okay, so let's draw the figure again. Um, you're going to be able to draw this figure better than I am, but let's 
fun to try. So, so here goes. On this axis, I'm going to put. Uh, I just just to change it up for have some fun. Let's put CTT here, and here let's put C. Um, T. T plus one C. T minus one T. So I need both of those. Um, and let's draw my feasibility line. And um, that's my endowment point. And let's draw, let's draw a nice offer curve. Um, so th that's my endowment point. And I'm drawing off a curve. And here goes. So that's psi of C T T C T T plus one. That's my off curve. Okay. So um and the the spirit of this is um, what must be true. Okay, so here's here's what has to be true. Um, uh, here's kind of the key insight. This is David Gale's insight. Um, take a competitive equilibrium allocation. And what must be true? So, um, well, we could think of it, it's a sequence. Uh, it looks like this, CTT, uh, CT plus one T. Um, and I'm gonna write this it's that pair that goes from one through infinity um, that must be on both curves. The offer curve and the feasibility line the feasibility frontier. So digest that. This sequence, that's a pair. It's, you know, Tom Sarge's consumption when he was young, Tom Sarge's consumption now that he's old. You know, um, Alberto Pacin's consumption, um, you know, and so on, so on, so on, so on. Okay. So here's how we're gonna, we're gonna propose an algorithm. Okay. Um, and if we stare at these, uh, Kind of the key word is going to be initial condition, initial condition. So what we're actually doing is we are solving a nonlinear difference equation. We've solved linear difference equations before. But so here's the way this is going to go. Um, We're going to um, we're going to take so this is going to be proposed an algorithm that's going to compute a competitive equilibrium allocation. What we're going to do so here goes. We're going to take um, C one one as a an initial condition. Um, in a particular set. 
and um, here's the thing. We'll um, discover the set um, soon from the graph. Just can't pick it anywhere. Can't pick it in outer space. So we're going to pick C11. And what is that? That's the consumption um, that the that a young person gets um, that uh, a young person at time one gets when he's young. So that's that we're going to take that as initial condition. And now here's going to be the algorithm. Step A. We're going to iterate. Step A. And remember, I said I have to be on both. This allocation has to be on both of these curves. It has to be on both of those curves. So how am I going to make that happen? Well, seek and you shall find. So I'm just going to do it constructively. So I'm thinking like a Python or MATLAB Fortran program. So I'm going to solve person one's offer curve for C12. That's what I'm going to do. So, um, you know, I'm going to solve psi C11, C12 equals zero. I'm going to compute C21 from that. B, here's, here's, Here's the trick. I'm going to solve um, the feasibility frontier. Okay. For C22. I can do. So what is that equation? So I know that's C12 plus C22 is equal to Y12 plus Y22. I can solve that. That's a linear equation. I solve for C2. And then I'm going to iterate. So now I'm going to treat Iterate and pray for convergence. And then that's it. And then when I'm done, um, so I submit that's going to give me a that's going to that's going to give me a sequence of allocations to each. That's going to give me a sequence of allocations to each person that uh, lies on each person's offer curve and lies on the feasibility line. Okay, so let's let's do it. Um, so um, this is all dependent on your having a uh, a friend who makes a guess at an initial condition. And um, you could say, is there a unique initial condition? And that works. Well, let's see that. You can you could figure that out. Okay, so let me let me do this. Um, let me take my first guess. Okay, I'm gonna take uh, watch this guess. I'm gonna take it right there. So my first guess is gonna be C. One, one, there. Um, I think I got this wrong. I gotta get, let me get this right. Okay, let's see how this goes. <clears throat> I'm going to set C11 right here. And I'm going to now come up here and I'm going to compute 
on the offer curve, I'm going to take a point on the offer curve, and I'm going to take C12 right there. Okay. I'm going to take that C12 that's right here. And I'm now going to go to the feasibility line. And I'm going to compute C. Um, I think I had a have a, a dyslexia attack. I'm going to take C one two here. That's when the person is old. And I'm doing this from the offer curve. And then I'm going to come back over here and get C two two. I'm going to give the remainder to the second person. To, to someone born at another time, the next generation, that's going to be C22. Um, and then I'm just going to keep going back and forth. Um, how much am I going to give uh, this person? I'm going to go, um, when they're old, I'm going to give them C22. Um, Let's see. Okay, I'm um, I'm having continuous dyslexia attacks with the superscripts and subscripts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to write out the algorithm step by step. I'm just going to write this out. I'm going to write what our algorithm was. Um, this A B C. A, B, C. So here's how I go. I take an initial condition. I take my initial condition, C11. I use the offer curve to get C12. I then take C, that's the consumption of a person born at time one when he's old. I take that, and now I use the feasibility line. Uh, he's on the offer curve, he's happy. Is it feasible? Well, if I give person uh, a person who was born in period two this amount from the feasibility line, uh, I can do it. But now I have to make him happy. So if I make him happy, I just take this. To make him happy, I have to put him in his offer curve. To put him on his offer curve, I've got to give him when he's old, C23, and so on. And I just keep going. And um, And, and this and this just keeps uh, going back and forth. Now I use feasibility again, and I keep I keep going. And if you do that, if you do that, um, I'll let you struggle with that. Um, what you'll find is what you'll find is. What you'll find is there, the way we've drawn this is, this is a stationary equilibrium. We just save it, sit there, because the algorithm is just gonna send us back and forth across these two points. Those are both stationary equilibrium. But I'm gonna pause here for, so I'm going to stop here a little bit. This is the offer curve. This is a psi. But what you'll find is the way this algorithm works is um, if we start, so this was our high interest rate equilibrium, stationary, high interest rate. And this was our low interest rate equilibrium. Um, that was autarky, but what you'll find is there, there's a continuum of other equilibria that sort of look like 
the the the, the logic goes like this. Um, I'll be on that feasibility line uh, to keep the person on that feasibility line. I have to come here and give him um, that when he's old. Uh, and this goes down like this. Those iterations go looking like this. You can see what's happening. So what 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 the way this goes is this apparatus of of, of Gale says um, there's a continuum of other equilibria um, that are indexed essentially by um, this initial condition, um, C11. Um, there's the, there's this highest uh, one that'll work and that's associated with the high interest rate equilibrium, but any uh, C11 um, um, below that will also uh, work and there's gonna be a continuum of, uh, there's gonna be a continuum of of, of competitive equilibrium allocations that are indexed, we can index them by this um, this scalar, the consumption of generation one at time one. And all of them, all of the non-stationary ones um, converge to the low interest rate equilibrium. They all converge. Um, except um, if we start just at this higher one. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, and then once, once we have, once we have the allocation, we can get the um, arrow debout price uh, system easily by, um, by just using our, our ratios of, our ratios of, um, um, of consumption, um, we're just we're just going to use margin utility prices. Okay, um, so it's a lot to think about with this machine. Um, we're going to use this in other in other contexts.